Here we have a new acquisition. Um, I bought it on eBay for 99 pence and have just collected it. It consists of a heavy cabinet. Um, and then in here you could store records. Uh, and in this drawer here, if you pull the drawer out, uh, is a record deck, which is the object of interest. Yes, I was interested in it because it's got a, uh, a Marconi phone, an early Marconi phone pickup, the sort that turns over for you to change the needle. Uh, and it's got a detent, it actually looks as though. I don't know what happens if you kept turning it, you'd break the wire, wouldn't you? Uh, under the uh, turntable, there are four, it's just held down by four wood screws. Uh, no, they're not uh, screws, they're actually 2BA, look like 2BA countersunk bolts. Uh, but there's only three of them holding it in, so we can actually now, can we remove it? Uh, and the answer is, yes we can. Right, so, so there it is. The turntable is in really rather good shape. Quite, uh, uh, you know, well, in good shape. And then underneath, what have we got? Well, it's got a speed control here, which goes down through that crank and operates a, tra a traditional um, centrifugal three-ball governor. Um, obviously the motor casing there with the coils inside it. Um, now there's a plaque here, what does it say? Uh, it says set for 200 to 250 volts uh, AC. So um, that's promising. Now looking at it from uh, the other angle, um, here is the wires from, from the head which are connected to these two pillar terminals. There's a volume control there um, with this traditional pointed knob. That's where it says univolt. Uh, and then the wires that went from these pillar terminals uh, went through ordinary twisted flex and was plugged into the back of your radio set. OK, we've carefully turned it over and um, it's quite interesting and not unattractive. Uh, underneath. Uh, here are all the, the motor, uh, you know, the laminations around the motor. This is all one casting. There's a bearing there. Then there's, the, you can see the governor. Uh, and the wiring um, there is where the uh, mains wire come in, comes in. And the guy I bought it off said he'd taken off the mains lead and th thrown it away, which is a very sensible thing to do so that no unqualified person will attempt to connect anything uh, using um, wire which is uh, corroded and uh, dangerous. The whole casting is secured by these three uh, bolts which are presumably moulded into the Bakelite. The nut has dropped off uh, that one, uh, however uh, it was inside the cabinet. Uh, we just need a washer. <laughs> so it's a good job I didn't throw the cabinet away. But then again, it's just a, probably a 2BA nut. So they've got copper wire threaded down this sort of stuff, like sister flex, whatever they used to call it, a sort of um, impregnated uh, shielding. Um, but on the other hand, there is here is a brass uh, retaining clip, and of course that'll have a sharp edge, so we'll have to check those. And then here's another feature. This sub-assembly that's got the arm mounted on it uh, is a different moulding. This, this isn't all moulded in one. It's bolted on there. So this is a separate moulding. And there are three screws here which would enable us to take the top off. And I think that would be our next step. Yes, what have we got? Let's have a look. Oh, good heavens. All sorts of uh, all sorts of stuff, eh? Yeah, well, this is great fun because what you've got here, are the, the original wire which came down the arm and came through here and is connected to the uh, ends of the volume control track. Uh, and then there's the positive, the red one, going up to the terminal. It's fine. And then the um, the third 
you know wiper of the potentiometer uh, goes goes out there. So that's fine. The only thing is, what's this wire for? Well, the answer is that this one has broken uh, in antiquity uh, and has been replaced by these. Someone has threaded two more wires down the arm. This is the overall stop-start switch, which may even work. It may it sounds fairly healthy. And here are the wind. I was wrong. They haven't got flying leads out of the motor windings. They've got little solder tags. One, two, three, four. One for each. And again, they're wired up with very, very thin wire, um, which must have been prone to breakage. Um, well, no, of course, I suppose the wires aren't moving about, are they? Uh, but I mean. Ordinary stranded wire uh, would have been much more of an obvious choice. I've taken the top plate, this plate, off there to lubricate the um, bearings. I've actually been rather generous with the oil, but no matter. Um, and it's interesting, here's the motor, the shaft, which has got a worm drive that drives the vertical centre shaft. And there's another worm on the other side with a governor. So that's an interesting two worm drives. Lubricated and um, the governor's interesting. I'll, I'll show it you while it's in this position. The structure of the, of the governor is also interesting. This plate, I'm not on a technical term, is the catch plate. Whatever it is, that's the thing which is drawn along this shaft as the balls expand. Um, the springs for the governor actually pass through the plate. You see there are three little spaces and the springs are anchored here and at the other end. So the governor is shorter than it otherwise would be. And I've, I've never seen a, a governor where the springs go through the catch plate before. So this machine is full of interesting little um, features. I'm just measuring the resistance, the DC resistance of the windings now. And I don't know whether you can see the needle, it's about 60 ohms. I think they both should be connected in a series. 60 ohms, uh, which is that's DC resistance. If we put AC on it, the impedance is far higher. I'm quite happy about firing this up now. Uh, I just want to check one other thing though. Here's the adjuster for the main supply. I just want to see what it's like to see if it's okay inside. And what does it have? Oh right, uh, obviously those are the ends of the windings and these shorting strips uh, connect. Uh, in fact, this is, that's, the, that's the one for mains, uh, for 250 volts and that joins that one to that one. So it's clearly putting them in series so we we'll just make sure it's nice and clear. Whoops. Uh, nice and uh, clean, no corrosion, we can always polish those up, but I think I'm quite happy now about uh, uh, putting it on, in indeed I've already put uh, a mains lead on it. Now I'll replace the, the top bearing. Very well, here goes. I will switch on the uh, that switch, and then here is the toggle switch, which is a bulging. Uh, well, it had pretty good. I'm sure it's going. And off we go. And it's, it's quite silent. Indeed, it's very silent in operation. Bearing in mind it's got some feet which are perished and it's standing on a table. If you lift it off the table, uh, it's virtually noiseless. And uh, 
It is rotating at 78, the strobe is rather hard to see because it's bright daylight. Yes it is, uh, but that's at the slow end, so we need to just adjust the linkage underneath. But there we have a very nice deck and there's quite a fair amount of torque in it. Um, because the other thing which is amazing, it suddenly dawned on me about this, it's the only surface mounting record deck I've ever seen. All of the record decks require a hole cut out in a board and you drop them through. Uh, but this isn't very thick either, I shall measure it.